What happens when you study the church puzzle and when you try to put it back together again, it doesn't fit? Next on the Ex-Mormon Files. Hi, and welcome to another episode of the Ex-Mormon Files. I'm your host, Bishop Burl. I appreciate you spending some time with us. As we met the last couple of times with Cindy and Dave Allred, I just uh, just felt impressed, I guess is a way to say it, that, that we should probably spend just a little bit more time with this wonderful couple and learn a little bit more about the way all this happened. And I guess we'd go back probably to the time when Spencer, your son, is preparing a lesson for church history at Sunday school. And he starts having questions about, I guess, was he directed to go to the church essays when he started his lesson, or was he just doing that some for extra study? He's like us. He's very thorough. Yeah. And um, so he wanted to be fully prepared and um, be able to answer questions that may come up uh, along the way. And as he was doing that, he noticed that there, there were things in the lesson materials um, that didn't seem familiar to him, and he was kind of confused by that. And so he did a little more research to see, well, what is meant by that? Yeah. And, and so what, did he call you? Did he ever talk to Dave about this? Uh, he didn't. He called me because I'm the one who's had the most interest in church history. Okay. And I had a lot of books. Uh, I had the complete set of B.H. Roberts' uh, comprehensive, oh, comprehensive history. history of the church. Yeah. And, um, and then a lot of others, too. So um, I was well versed in church history, well, or at think? least I thought yeah. I was. Oh, that's, that's true. What did you think about what he was bringing up? Do you, had you heard any of this contradiction in it, at least what he was bringing up? Well, he, he did ask me about the seer stone, and I was aware that there was a seer stone uh, from church history, but um, not that it had been used in translation, just that it had been used for other things, uh, kind of more like a Liahona yeah. thing uh, for direction and uh, maybe to find something that was buried. And at this point, Dave isn't brought into this, right? I mean, you and Spencer are kind of going back and forth doing right. this study. Right. At this point, it's but just you're kind of, Dave. You're a little bit aware of, but you weren't aware. sure of what they were studying. I would catch some things that they were talking about, but then I would just go do what I was doing. Yeah. How long did this go on, do you think? Or was it kind of just during this time preparing um, for the lesson? Well, it was um, a good share of the month of October and then... Of 2017. Right. Yeah. Some of into and, November. And then into November. Okay. Yeah. Well, so tell us the dynamics, what, what actually goes on between the two of you. and Because I think one of the things that's most concern, concerning to me as a, a former Latter-day Saint, especially watching couples divide over this information or go atheist and all that, sometimes we feel like maybe they uh, aren't coming together, the husband and wife. So how do you, how do you feel like you bridge that with the two of you? Well, I think we were fortunate yeah. uh, because as I read the first two essays and I found, indeed, there are a lot of problems here. And in fact, I think I used the word, this is such a mess. <laughs> um, then it, the more I read, the more concerned I was. And then eventually, following all the footnotes, reading all 13 essays. By then, I was saying things to Dave, this is a mess. I, I, I need you to take a look at this. And his initial response was... was tell us. <laughs> <laughs> I don't need no stinking essays, because I thought I knew what church history was. Sure, you've done your study. Yeah, and stuff and, you the know, the all-red name is just way, 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 way back. Oh, that's true. You know, so all red. There's a lot of all reds in the church. In fact, that's the most prominent name. 
Is it really the oldest yeah. church? Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. So we both thought that we knew a lot about church history. Turns out <laughs> we didn't really. And uh, reading those essays, we learned a lot more that we had never come across before. So did you, in sharing with Dave, <clears throat> then Dave, when you used, did you go to the essays then eventually? Yes, I went to the essays, read those, and uh, of course I went and watched that uh, first video by Grant Palmer, Grant Palmer, and then the essays, and then the CES letter by Jeremy Runnell. Now that's had a, quite an impact in this whole journey, hasn't it? The yeah. CES letter, because right. Jeremy was, tell us about that. <laughs> well, he just had questions. Jeremy, Spencer. Um, Jeremy did. Well, right, but I meant he, he's connected, or <clears throat> had connected himself with. with well, eventually Spencer. he discovered the CES letter. Spencer did. Spencer did, and he shared that with us oh, okay. as well. So then we realized, wow, that was pretty astute of him to realize these questions. And then we sort of shamed ourselves a bit. Why didn't we ever think of these yeah. things? But I think we just had our heads down. We were just busy, nose to the... Grindstone. Yeah. Um, shoulder to the wheel, <laughs> you know. Working your way to the celestial right. kitchen. Right. So, but that did give us a lot of things to think about. Yeah. That, um, hey, yeah, what about this? Yeah, well, I, again, think it's remarkable, and, and it is unfortunate that sometimes couples don't share that together, and, and sometimes we do it incorrectly. I think you did it correctly. Is there anything else you had done differently than what you I did? I think what, what we should have done more correctly is bring our other kids in on our discussions. Mm -hmm so that we didn't just throw it all at them at once and we could have done it piece by piece like taking apart that church puzzle right and we studied we studied uh, each pu puzzle piece and then when we tried to put it back together it wouldn't fit i think the reason we didn't bring them in is because we didn't want to alarm them with something that because initially you we felt we were going to resolve this, yeah. and it wasn't. We we had no idea it would um, result to. in a complete earthquake. You know, that's exactly what happened to me. I was afraid to influence someone else when I really wasn't sure, and I figured so. that I would get the answers. Yeah. Dave, you were going to say. So, the that that puzzle, it was. It was just, we were praying, we were hoping, we were reading, we were studying, hoping that the church was true. That the answer would be there somewhere. But somewhere the answer would be there. Yeah. But it wasn't. It, we just kept getting further and further away. And learning more and more. Like you said, you know more about church history now than you did before. And That's right. Who would have ever guessed? You mentioned something about grace, and we didn't actually talk to you about grace in your interview. Had you ever understood the concept of grace? I would have said that I understood grace. Oh. But I think what I thought of as grace was more graciousness. Mm. I understood that God was loving and gracious and encouraging, but I, I didn't understand it to the extent that he himself came yeah. and paid the ultimate sacrifice for not just my sins, not just Dave's <laughs> sins, not just Earl's sins. Right. Every one of us, every sin he took and took the punishment okay. for it. Yeah. That we deserved the punishment. And all we have to do is believe and right. trust in Him and His, and his righteousness. And right. Yeah. And then He covers us with <laughs> His righteousness and, and justifies us yeah. so that 
we have that perfect value. Did you talk to anybody about your questions at all? Did you have occasion to to end up talking to a bishop or the bishop or No, we just kind of dug into it ourselves, just between us. And just realized Well we came to the realization at first I thought that the uh, leadership of the church, the First Presidency and the Quorum of Twelve, they couldn't possibly know that this is what was out there. Did you there. think you'd invented the whole thing? I mean, not invented it, but that you were the only one well, that I knew thought, about it? Yeah. <laughs> I thought the website had been hacked. I That's did. Right, you said. I, I thought someone has snuck in here with stuff and really pulled a prank. But then as we went along and got more involved in following the footnotes and, and then all of the conference talks that are associated with them as well, we realized they, they knew everything. Yeah. And they had published these documents. And, and I think we had a discussion, didn't we, that we decided it must have been written by attorneys. Yeah. The kind verbiage. Of what it that's a sense I get, too. Yeah. That right. Very articulate, I mean, very wordy. Precise, Precise language. language. Um, not, not too harsh, but, you know, kind of softening things that really are pretty harsh. Yeah. Um, so, so we realized, okay, the, the church knows, and this is their documents, and this is the way that they're going forward. Yeah. So we knew that if we met with our leaders, they may not know any of it, because why would they? Yeah. Um, and then we would just cause them grief and it wouldn't resolve the problem. So when we actually sat down and pushed each other's button, she's always pushing my button. <laughs> so I resigned for her, she resigned for me, and then it says in 60 to 90 days you will get confirmation that you've been removed from the records of the church. Well, six days later we got that confirmation. Really, that, yeah. that quickly. And when that letter goes out to us, a letter sent to the <clears throat> bishop and to the stake president, letting them know what's happened. Mm -hmm. And I guess the, bish the stake president got his letter, and he called the bishop and he says, have you opened your mail? <laughs> and he says, no, I've been busy. You've got to open your mail. And then he told him what had happened, that we had resigned. And because we never talked to anybody, not even our kids, no neighbors, nobody. Wow. It just rocked the bishop's world. He came over and sat down and he says, why didn't you talk to me? What, you know, I could have helped you. And hmm. he says, we really didn't want to bother you <laughs> because we had to go through this. Were you able to share anything with him? Oh, was yeah. He, was yeah. he willing to listen or did he? He, he listened and he yeah. says, well, I didn't know about that. No. But and initially, that's so often the case, they just don't know, and worse, they don't really want to know. I mean, our first thought wasn't to resign, though. Our yeah. first thought was, we will just gradually fade, fade, fade. Just quit going to church, become and inactive, and then become inactive, inactive, and then just disappear in the woodwork. So, what was the thought process then about resigning? Well, we realized that if we stayed, we were actually in direct opposition to Jesus Christ. And we did not want to be that. At least the good news we, of, of the gospel. And our integrity. We had to be true. Yeah. Because we knew that it was not true, so we couldn't just go inactive yeah. because of our integrity. You didn't want to be a hypocrite. We right. couldn't pretend. See, I was serving in the primary as the secretary, so I was interacting with all the teachers, the presidency, and all the children. Mm. I, I was very much involved. And um, 
and in fact, I was encouraging all the kids to memorize their 13 articles of, of faith. Of course, during this, yeah. <clears throat> all during this reboot. time. When you went to church those last few month or two, did you, was it difficult? Were there things you were hearing and you think, you know, they don't really know. When they bear their testimonies at fast and testimony meeting, you're thinking, uh, I don't think they really, I don't think they know everything. It was probably two weeks before we resigned that the bishop asked Cindy to speak in sacrament meeting. Oh my. No, it was a little more than that because it was early December. Okay. But you did? I did. What, did you talk about Jesus? I did. I did. <laughs> Good for you. <laughs> All about Jesus. I Was gave really? I gave a talk about kindness and uh, all of my scripture references were from the New Testament. Oh, uh, that's neat. Yeah. Well, I know there's so much to talk about. How did you pick a church to go to after you came out? Um, after you did you did you immediately say we need to go to a church or did you want to kind We of actually went hiking and you went as, you know, a couple <laughs> Sundays, yeah, um, and thinking, praying. Uh, we prayed in the mountains a lot. What do we do now? Huh? Yeah, what okay. do we do now? Where do we go? And a good friend of ours um, suggested that we try a couple churches because, like I said, when the dust settled, Christ was there, and we wanted to stay with Christ. Yeah. So we went to, and they I, they invited us to go to the National Day of Prayer. Right. That was an amazing thing. We had never heard about it, or if we did, we just didn't pay any attention. Um, but they, this friends of ours, they went every year, and still do, um, to the National Day of Prayer, and it's when a group of churches gets together, and I think there's what, like 30 churches or more? Or more, Christian yeah. churches that come together and they pray over every aspect of life. They pray over the military, they pray over the government. Oh, the schools. The schools, the students. Um, wow. It was pretty amazing. And families. And after that meeting, this friend of ours took us over to a table and introduced us to um, Pastor Jody uh -huh. at the Adventure Church. Oh, okay. And so, so we met her and Ira, another pastor, and And she, their secretary sat at the table with us, yeah. Brenda, we met her. And within two minutes she actually hugged each of us three different times. And we'd never been treated like that before. Yeah. We felt the love from her and how much she loved Christ and that touched us but then during the next what month and a half we went to maybe four other different churches but because of how we were treated when we went to the adventure church um, that is our home church oh great and the other churches we attended were really were nice too we yeah. we liked them it's just that we felt, felt a really special um, Comfort, the, I think. The first time you went into a Christian church and had the <clears throat> cross on the wall, or probably, and how, how did how did you react to that? So and the different. Music and it everything. Was, it was awesome to see a huge cross. It was, was probably it really? eight feet, ten feet tall. And yeah. You like that? Yeah. But by that point, we had already started developing a respect and a love for what happened on the cross. Yeah. See, we, we hadn't thought about that before, and whenever our children had asked us why we don't use crosses, we had just said, you know, we, we concentrate on the living Christ, the yeah. standard answer. Yeah. And not the way he died. Right. Not realizing how, how significant it is and what it means to us now. Yeah. Right. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> so it was a comfort to us to yeah. see the cross there on the wall. And the music is always so worshipful, isn't it? That, it was awesome. Yeah, the words are all about Jesus and God. And yeah, everything, yeah. everything is about Jesus. Yeah. In so fact, different. we would have said that we worshiped on Sunday by attending church, but 
that as, as Mormons that meeting yeah. Yeah. is nothing like what we experience now as Christians where we do actually worship and sing praises yeah. to God. Now we've met here for a little bit with both of you and now together again. Is there anything that we've missed talking about? Anything that you'd like to share? Born again moments or not born again, but I mean just other special feelings. Feelings are important in the church and Mormonism. How do you, and I guess I've asked two or three questions here, but anything we've left out? Anything you want to share? There are a couple of things of I want to. I think the first time we went to the Adventure Church, they had communion. Oh. And they pass it. We we take a little wafer and um, a cup of grape juice. Right. I thought, whoa, grape juice. Well, that's kind of like what Christ did at the Last Supper. You know, yeah. His blood. And everybody was took the sacrament or took the communion, and then the uh, pastor said a few words, a prayer, and then we we took it, and that was really different for us. It was heartwarming. It was wonderful, really meaningful, isn't yeah. it? It's just so interesting that they've taken leavened bread and unleavened bread. I mean, made it. Joseph made that change and then the water and the wine or grape juice because at the Passover Jesus would have had unleavened bread and wine right at the upper room right. that's what they would have been doing so it's just funny about this restoration of all things and and yet they kind of twist it just a little bit go to water and to leavened, leavened bread yeah in fact. and it all made perfect sense to us it did until to me too. we stopped and thought yeah. It all the way through. Yeah. And the meaning of, of what it really right. what it really means. Well, I know you've done some you've been involved in something called Jesus Feeds and maybe you could share that with us, what you've been doing what that is and Well as, one of you. <laughs> as baby Christians yeah. we we're just trying to figure out, okay, well How can we help? <laughs> how does this work? Yeah. And, and we're so used to doing that we no feel calling. like we have to do, you know. Uh, but so we've just kind of looked to see where are ways that um, we can participate and be part of yeah. what God is doing. And uh, we want to make sure that we're always in, in line with what God's directing because He's the one in charge. It's, yeah, that's a great feeling, isn't it? it so it's comforting. So, too. what is Jesus Feeds? Is that a program that uh, that is a program that I think Adventure Church has been doing for over seventeen years? Wow, quite a few years. Yeah. I'm not sure how many. Not sure um, how many years, <clears throat> but it it goes along with the um, the food bank. Yes, community food bank. So they every Wednesday they unload a truck of uh, produce, food, mm -hmm. and they have a room set out, a couple different rooms where they it's like walking into a store where and, people that have need uh, can yeah, come in. And, it's a large pantry, and I think they serve about fifty people ish a week. Or families. Or families. Oh, that's wonderful. So they get to go through and pick what they need, so they can pick bread, cereals, you know. Toiletries, canned goods. canned goods, fresh things. They've got freezers with frozen yeah. uh, foods in it too. So and we help. We've been helping prep that for the Thursday when people come in and collect those items that they need. So we've been doing the Wednesday work. We're, <laughs> we're not there on Thursday when the oh. the people actually come oh, to that's the. That's neat, though. But it feels good to be doing something for other people. And I don't know that fast offering donation just wasn't quite the same as, as it, when you're really helping other people and gathering up. But that's well, and the thing we've noticed is that everyone that's there participating in that project, yeah. they're just happy to be there. They're they're and serving uh, and mm -hmm. yeah. very cheerful. They enjoy each other's company, and there's great camaraderie and yeah. Well, guys, believe it or not, we're about out of time again already. 
these go so fast and there's probably so much more to share, but let's end on a note of Jesus here and uh, as we like to do. And you mentioned, I think in your interview, how much different this Jesus is that we, we have regard for and, and you right. probably did too. Um, just, he's just so different, isn't he, than the Mormon yeah. Jesus. And I know President Hinckley said something about the traditional Christ isn't the one that the Mormons worship. And any thoughts, uh, last minute thoughts on? Well, I know that the, the Christ that we have studied and learned about is the real Christ. <laughs> and one of the things that is so awesome is when a Christian prayers, prays, Yeah. You know, they'll ask you, so how are you feeling? Well, I'm feeling pretty good, but you know, I've got a sore back or my Cindy's not feeling too good. They just put their hands on you and pray right there on the spot. <laughs> and uh, that was really nice. They're yeah, not they're afraid just... to pray and bless people. Yeah, and I think there's an admission that that they're sinners, that we're sinners, mm -hmm. and that we need a Savior, uh, Jesus. And Mormons, you never sensed a sense of uh, a sinful, uh, that you're sinful at all. We're always trying to show forth a very proud look and that we're all perfect and things are just fine. Yeah. Well, because we were always instructed that people were watching and you want to be showing your, your best. That's right. And. Um, but now we're realizing that everyone is is where they are and they need love yeah. and that Jesus Christ is accessible. We don't have to go through Joseph Smith or whoever the <laughs> current president of the church is. Right. Um, and that was always a comfort to me before knowing we had a prophet but now I see that it's a, a block between your relationship with Jesus Christ yeah. um, and his relationship with you. Now we feel much closer and we feel the love so much I'm free. more. Yeah, the personal relationship, even bishops and stake presidents and again up to prophet. All of that just seems to be in between us and Jesus for some reason. Right. You know? And so we've, we had a feeling that we could never measure up to be in Jesus' presence. Right. And um, we, we always wanted to, <laughs> but, we, you know, falling short, being human, yeah. we could never do enough. But he wants that relationship with us. Yeah. And we want it with him. Yeah, and, and the Bible means so much more. I mean, okay. we've all both expressed that, but just never appreciated the Bible and the archaeology and all the support for the Bible. And we hadn't given any thought at all to all the manuscripts. There are all of these manuscripts. Supporting the Bible. <laughs> Right. I never knew that either. Never even thought about it. It's joyful. I'm not sure why we didn't think about it. We were too busy. Right. Well, we, we, were, we only study the New Testament once every four years. Four years, and now it's even less than that, probably. I don't yeah. know how they're going to work that out. But Well, you're a delightful couple, and I just appreciate it. And I'm so grateful, and I know you are too, that you were able to make this journey together. It just doesn't always happen. and. We certainly hope those families that are struggling maybe with each other's um, situation and where they're at in their journey, that they'll be patient and show love to each other and, and uh, understanding and, and hopefully God will continue to soften hearts and learn truth. That would be our advice. Be patient and be loving because the relationship between husband and wife is the most important yeah. thing, communication. And you've got to give it some time. You've got to spend time together and talk about things. Yeah, and we're just always grateful, eternally grateful for Spencer oh, for showing us <laughs> the truth. 
And for a, for a mom and dad to listen to, to a son is it's pretty impressive too. Yeah. yeah. God definitely planted some seeds somewhere and got you yeah. right where he wants you. <laughs> He's got us. Yeah. I, I think we would have been willing to listen to any of our kids, and oh, maybe sure. even our grandkids too. Right. I would hope that we would, but that's what I would encourage yeah. anyone to um, listen. Yeah. Listen to your family and and uh, spend read time the Bible together. and read the gospel essays, maybe, huh? <laughs> thoroughly. Right. Yeah. Read the Bible together. Read the Bible together. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Anything else? I guess we'll I think that's wrap it. it up. All right. Well, thanks so much. Appreciate you sharing. And we'll see you next time on the Ex-Mormon Files.